Hey guys. Hey, what's going on? It's another kind of what? off episode. Not off episode, but we've never been off, sweetie. That's true. We're always on our game yeah, that's here right. on I almost said our other podcast. On oh, yeah. Martinis and Murder. Thank God. So unfortunately Matt is not with us this week. Now this he is died. his second <laughs> Well, I mean, you made a good point last week. You know, he wasn't really doing his job. And now this week, he's not even here. And he died. You know, I don't know what jobs you've had in your life, but if I you mean, don't like, show up. Yeah, I mean, like, normally we have glass cups, and today we have <laughs> stupid cardboard things that John <laughs> picked out today. So, I well, mean, like. <laughs> the reason is, is because Matt didn't wash our martini glasses. Um, so, yeah. once again, dropping the ball. I dropping mean, ball. like I said, I don't know what. Uh, what job you've ever had in your life, but if you don't show up and do your job, you get you yeah, get Yeah, I've never had a job, so I can't tell you That's what it's true. like to have one. That's true. But I do know that we've hacked into his liquor cabinet, and <laughs> we're going to do a shot, right? It kind of feels like, you know, whenever your parents would, like, go out of town as a kid, yeah. and they had, like, a liquor cabinet with a key. This is just me. Yeah, because um, my parents did not have a key. I was going to say, mine didn't yeah. either, so I don't know what I'm really talking like about. Drinking, so it was never, like, a risk. <laughs> I didn't either, but I was yeah. like, I always was like, ooh, what's in this cabinet that Absolutely. I could steal? That's basically exactly what we ha- uh, we've done. And Matt has... A literal cabinet in his office. Just of li- like people think there's papers, a file, filing. yeah, like really important floppy documents. Discs. Yeah, it's liquor. No, but it's a whole and liquor cabinet. And there's snacks and I think like a can of soup. Oh, that's true. Let me just open it. Let's, really let's, quick. let's double check. I think is the soup office. still in there? I think there's like a cardboard um, thing of soup behind the other liquor. <laughs> is there? Lentil vegetable L- soup. Lentil vegetable. And minestrone. So I have my lunch packed the next two days, so I'm good. <laughs> the martini this week is minestrone. Yeah. There you go. Yes. No, actually, I pulled... Soup-tini. I pulled... Oh, I love the na- that <laughs> name. I pulled my favorite, my personal faves, Crimped which are... cacao! And raspberry okay. vodka. Do you think that's a good mix? Is that what we did before? I think so. It's okay. like a... It's very sweet. Yes. Are you going to concoct a little shot for I us? I am. Do you want something different? No, this, this is This works good. for you? Okay. I'm going to have you make it, though, because you remember when I made the... Uh, Concoctatini. Yes, and were, that was a bit of a mess. You were on the last leg of your life there. It was, it was very blue, though. I'll mm-hmm. give you that. Why don't you tell everybody what we're doing this week? Because we're not discussing a new murder. Unfortunately, we're not discussing a new murder because Matt, as I said, Drop has passed away. Um, <laughs> but so we're taking a little Drop. shot. And we're doing a little intro. And we're going to flash back to a, a really good episode that John, I mean, it feels so weird always saying that it's like a really good episode or like an yeah. episode that John and I loved because it's it feels a little insensitive to do that. But we are going to be flashing a heavy pour there for John. I mean, John. I'm giving you a look because I don't know, like I can't even see the bottom of the cup, so I don't know how oh, much Oh, good, it's... yeah, it's all clear. So yeah. we're anyway. going to be flashing back to Skylar Nice. Yes. For all of you who remember that, it was also a snapped episode, right? Yes, and it was also the episode, if you remember, uh, that I have a personal connection to. Yes. And I lived in the town and That's lived... a big shot, John. I know, sorry, and lived down the street from... Uh, the complex where Skylar and East lived. Yes. And, you know, I had a friend that... Anyway, you'll get all here about you'll, it here in a minute. You'll hear it, but it's a really good... Yeah. It's a really interesting and good story, and it helps, you know, create awareness for everything. Yeah. So we wanted to flash back to it yeah. uh, while Matt is clearly not with us. Ridiculous. And so given the fact that we're giving a little short intro today, we wanted to take, like, a quick shot with you guys. We hope that you're going to take a shot with us to remember the story. Let's... This Let's is, cheers, this is bitch. This actually a two-shot, so I feel like... It gonna... is a bit too much. So I'm, a, I'm just going to take a sip of it, but cheers, cheers, bitch. Cheers, bitch. Then let me do a little clang. Go ahead and take yours. I'm yeah, going to do clang. a clang as if... Cheers, bitch. Oh, oh that didn't that was work. A little I tried to just do some kind of cling, because you can't do a clinging, clanging with... Did you just take the whole thing? No, I took half. Oh, okay. Let it's me take this. It's more creme sip. de cacao than oh, anything is it? else. No, it's fine. It like, doesn't even taste like alcohol. Oh, my God. It's actually really... I love it. I feel fine. Oh, my God. My chest is burning. Um... <laughs> But anyway, yes, yeah, Skylar Nice. What else is there to say? I mean, you'll hear the episode. This came out January 29th. Uh, it was actually oh our God, episode really? third. I know. Isn't that weird? It's going to be May next week already. Jesus. Um, I did want to get to a couple of um, quick listener shout outs. Yeah, please do. Um, Amanda Larkin on Twitter says, Martinis and, Bur- and Murder makes my drive to work so much better. Hashtag oh. cheers, bitch. If we're making anyone's like work related anything better, that is the best compliment that oh. we can get. Absolutely. Um, 
Uh, Ugly Duckling on Twitter says, I'm only three episodes in, but I'm hooked. Hashtag martinis and murder. Well, when she gets to episode, what is this, 16, she's going to be surprised. Ooh. Amanda Larkin, who I just mentioned, says, um, oh, that's actually the same one. Lindsay Bunker says, hashtag crime time all the time, listening to hashtag martinis and murder, watching hashtag snapped, and reading... Um, it looks like another book, The Most Dangerous Animal of All. So, great. Thanks, Lindsay. Do you think that's about Matt? It is. And in fact... Um, it is. It is. Do you think the whole book is just like, it's like blank pages <laughs> and then in the middle is just like a picture of Matt? <laughs> yes. Yes. That's absolutely what it that's is. That's a bestseller on Amazon. Karis on Twitter says, catching up on martinis and murder, another Florida killing. Damn the state. Tell me why I moved here again. Hashtag it's always Florida. It absolutely is always Florida, by the way. If you ever th- are curious about... It's either Florida or Maryland. It's always one of those two things. Anyway, so that's it for our listener shout-outs. I also want to mention big news. Big news. Snapped Season 20 premieres this Sunday. Uh, or uh, no, not this Sunday. It's on. May, May 7th. Sorry, I'm getting... I'm trying to get the not timing mixed Sunday. up. Sunday. May 7th, the following like Sunday. Sunday, it's the Scott Peterson two-part special. It's going to oh be God. so good. Yes. We are in. You and I are going to be watching it. DVR, 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 DVR. Yes. There you go. That's it. So check out this episode from <sighs> January 29th with Skylar Niece, and we'll be back next week with an all-new episode. All-new murder, all-new Matt. All-new soup all teeny. All-new soup teeny. Yes, absolutely. If you have any uh, soup-related martini recipes, send them our Please. way. Please. We love them. All right. See you guys. Bye. Bye. We're back. Uh, we are back. Episode three. Three has started. Of Martinis and Murder. And Murder. Welcome, everyone. Hey, everybody. How? how welcome, Darren, to our show. I know. We're show. both in black today. I think we should say the, that. I think this is... It's one of those, you know, I think whenever we record the show, we should just always wear black. You're in black, but Every also day. a black beanie. I look like a hacker <laughs> today or a ninja. Either one, yeah. I think, could pass. Yeah, absolutely. Which both are a part of the kind of universe of the show, absolutely. you know? Absolutely, I mean? but we're we're dark and we're <clears throat> somber today. By the way, I wanted to mention going back to episode one. Yes. Did you hear when I think we were both just getting so excited about the show, but I forget exactly how it happened. Now I wish I would have prepped a little better, but I I was basically like. I'm John, and you said, I'm Darren, and I'm so excited to be here with you, John. And I was like, I know. And on today's episode, (laughs) and I don't know, I was just ready to move on. I didn't quite catch that you were like, I'm so happy to be here. So apologies. The feeling is not mutual, apparently. (laughs) It's just I'm more excited to be with you than you are with me. Well, episode three, you know, we're working these kinks out. We're doing a really good job. That's Um, right. I'm going to hack into your database (laughs) now. Yes. Um, So we are wearing all black to give you a setting. Matt, our bartender, is working on some new martinis in the background. I'm really excited about this week's martini because Ooh. it is a... There's that. Oh, there it is. A vigorous <laughs> swish. We need to get what like an that, ice... A swish? What do you call it? That is a... A shake. A shake. I'm yeah. dumb. Okay. Sh- like vigorous shake. Shaken or From stirred. our strong-armed mat. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to have candy cane martinis today, Ooh. which seem a little out of season. I was going to say, I know that people January. don't like out of season things, and I get <laughs> it. Uh, so here's what's in the martini today. Normally, it would call for vanilla vodka, but we both hate flavored vodka. Wait a minute. When you say we both, it, you mean you and Matt. I personally do like flavored vodka. You're a child at heart. So I'm offended at the thought that no one asked me if I would like flavored vodka. They just went straight to you. Well, You make I mean, all the decisions around here. Well, last week you were like, there were mules. And the, you're just high maintenance. <laughs> no, I am. You're right. Uh, so I don't like flavored <laughs> vodka. We can so get into they... why I don't later. <laughs> sure. Not on important. another episode. On another <laughs> special episode of yeah. Martinis and Murder. But uh, So we're using regular vodka today. It smells really good in here, by the way. Yes. The, uh, the crunching uh, You know, noise every time the... I say this ingredient, I always want to say it this way. Okay. White cream de cacao. De cacao. I always, <laughs> always want to say it like that. Right. So I'm going to continue with that. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Uh, a splash of peppermint schnapps. And of mm. course, along the rim, which if you can hear that yeah. crunching in the background, it's as if you have a margarita with salt on the rim. We are having candy, candy canes, canes on, on the, the rim. rim. So yeah. I'm feeling... 
you know, post-holiday season, I'm really getting into it. I'm excited for these candy cane martinis today. And I'm watching Matt try to put uh, the candy cane in a, around in a, the rim. In, in he's in crunching them. In a commissary them. Yeah. Uh, container. <laughs> and he's, but I'm feeling it. He's yeah, making this absolutely. work for us. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, by the way, we're going to get to, you know, one of the questions we've been getting, we'll get into this case, obviously, very soon. But one of the questions I've been getting since, and maybe you've been seeing this too, Darren. Yes. Is people want to know, are we actually drinking? A lot of people didn't know, they were suspicious, like maybe we were just pouring water in the background. Um, Matt's spilling. <laughs> like, we have electronics over here, Matt. Yeah, this well, is we'll a serious production. Because you actually got yes. this question way more than I did. Oh, okay. I don't think anyone questions the fact that I drink That's at I work, say, which yeah. is also a problem for me. They're like, you're a professional, John. Right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, we'll get we'll to get that. We'll get to all that fun stuff uh, a yes. little bit later on. Um, Exciting on. news, though. Absolutely. Big news here for us here on Martinis and Murder. We have a little bit of housekeeping to uh, tend to. We are featured at the moment uh, as we, need we record to clean up this. After Matt is what you're yeah, saying. no, we yeah. need to get someone in here to help Matt with yeah. <laughs> a little bit of a mess. Um, at the moment, we are featured in the new and noteworthy section on iTunes. Yay! Clap, everybody! Yay! High five! <clears throat> now this is like a really big deal because. To get into the new and noteworthy, you know, that's where everyone that's looking for podcasts goes and finds new shows. Definitely. And so to be featured there is such a huge thing. So thank you to everyone who listened to the first two episodes and made it a huge success. And on top of that, we were as high as, now there's no real way to figure out how high we've gone on this chart, but when I checked a few days ago, this was after episode two came out, uh, we were number 72 in the top 100 podcasts I love, in the I love world. I number. Hey, I know. Here, let's do another clap for, us, for ourselves. That's right. <laughs> as we get the candy. Ooh, the yeah. Ooh. accoutrement. Yeah. Now, if we had a studio audience, they would be here clapping and cheering for us. <gasps> Ooh, we're Ooh. getting served now. Okay, Matt's oh, giving me. Oh, gets the small one. Interesting. Did he put? Po- he switched. To, okay. Yeah, he, he switched. He comes over it. and hands us, and then switches his arms. Now one of them might have poison in them. Well, Matt's your boss, That's so maybe true. So it's, it's okay <laughs> for me to get liquored up at work, and for you, it's like you have to go back to work after let's, this. Let's let's check and see how we're feeling by the end of the episode. Who might be poisoned and who That's might right. not? That's right. Okay, cheers. Here's a cheers. Cheers, cheers to, to you, Matt. Matt, who will not be speaking on this episode. Either. He's not allowed by law. Oh, it's very cold. Let me just take a sip. By the way, that was another thing people mm, said. Chilling. Oh my god, this, this is, is like really delicious. good. Wow. Wait a minute. Quit your job and yeah. go bartend. <laughs> this might be good. the best martini I've ever had, just that taste. Agreed. That was delicious. One of my friends, by the way, guys, we will get in. We won't just be drinking. We actually will be talking about a murder in a second. But <laughs> one of my friends, I hadn't talked to him in years, messages me on Facebook last week. And he was like, hey, um, I just want to give you one quick feedback. I want to hear a little bit more sipping and slurping. And then like... Signed up. I was like, what? Who doesn't want to hear a I, sip and a slurp? Me. I yeah, hate, I hate that, that stuff. Too. But so it was just so funny. I was like, really? Because, you know, one of the first rules of radio Maybe you and podcast. sexy slurp, John. <laughs> Maybe. Well, one of the first rules is like, you don't eat on air, you don't slurp things on air. So that's, I was always kind of making sure I was like sipping away from the microphone. But apparently there's a market out there of people that Maybe want to hear that. Maybe they don't believe us. Here I am eating a candy cane. Yeah. Yeah. So we are actually drinking. I'm going to take one more sip and we'll get into this. This is the case of Skylar Niece, S K Y L A R Niece N W E S E. That fl- flows right off the tongue. Yeah. But it's a case of a 16-year-old girl, Skylar Niece, and she was stabbed to death actually by her two best friends. It, why are, it, all of a sudden you're laughing? I'm in the giggling middle of because me. I thought I was supposed to take this section, but it was totally you. And then I just realized I was wrong. So continue and do not pay it's attention. A I'm already drunk apparently off of this I'm one cutting martini. You off. Yeah, cut me off. Here. Uh, so 16 year old Skylar Niece was actually stabbed to death uh, not too long ago in 2012. Um, <clears throat> 2013, excuse me. I think it happened in 2012. Okay, but, but then, then everything it, happened in the next year. We'll get into year. it. Yeah, it's, we're getting into the it. The actual murder happened in 2012, yeah. but she was stabbed by her two best friends in a small town in. In West Virginia, yeah. but it wasn't just mm. any small town, was mm. it, John? This is a special town to you. A, a very special town because in this town named Morgantown, West Virginia, yes. I lived in it for five years. That is where West Virginia University is, exactly. and so that's where you went to school, exactly. hence the reason you were there for five yes. years. So this was a very special case because although I wasn't living in Morgantown at that time, Obviously, I have very close connections. I only lived about an hour away at that point. Right. So we'll get into all of my sort of little mentions here. And Morgantown here. isn't that 
big. I you mean, know, when we were watching the episode yeah. back, because this is actually, uh, this was this murder was actually episode 18, in season 18, excuse me, of Snapped on yeah. Oxygen. Yeah. The episode was titled Sheila Eddy. We'll mm-hmm. get into her in a minute. Mm-hmm. But you saw all these old, well, not yeah. old, I guess like only a few years old images of Morgan Down, and you recognized everything, Every I would thing. say. I mean, it was kind of weird because... Working at Oxygen, working on Snapped for, I don't know how many seasons I've worked on Snapped. You know, I've seen so many episodes. Right. Sharon Martin, the narrator, and I are friends. We talk all the time. I'm very kind of absorbed in this world of Snapped, and it's sure. never quite hit home. And then this episode comes out, and it's B-roll of like, you know, and when I say B-roll, I mean shots of like, you know, Morgantown, the town. And I'm like, that's down the street from where yeah. I live. Like, That's I where I went there. to class for three years. You I know? got drunk there. Yeah, no, right. really. It was a lot of that yeah. stuff, actually. And, you know, I shared the episode. We had, we did some editorial on the website around it as well, and I shared it on Facebook. I was like, Crazy. Morgantown Friends, check this out. And everyone was like, oh, my God, it's going to be on Snapped. You know, this, this particular case has been covered ver- on, by various media yes. Co- places. Yeah, so... You know, some people were aware that it was getting attention, but for it to be on Snapped was particularly... And just to be clear, just to clarify, this case happened after Mm -hmm. you had already lived there. So you had moved out, you weren't there while this case was going down. No, I wasn't living there, but like I said, I was only an hour away. I I used to play the only indoor, just to give you some personal stuff here, the only indoor tennis center in like that whole region of the world was only in Morgantown. Oh, okay. So I was living about an hour away and I would drive up there multiple times a month to play tennis. So I was very well aware of like you know, the dynamics and the sort of layout of the town. Now, it's it's named Morgantown. However, it's really kind of a small city. I mean, it's the biggest, I think, the biggest city in West Virginia. 30,000 people. Yeah, I mean, it's probably even more than that at this point. Um, you know, it's a huge, huge college town. I actually was just there again over uh, the Christmas break when I went home for the holidays. And it's developed even more since the last time I was there. I mean, it really is like the epicenter, you know, WVU has huge basketball, huge baseball or um, football team. So it's, it's a cultural epicenter. And I loved all five years that I lived there. And I always think of my friends and family that live back there now. So, but you know, to answer your original question, it is, it is a, it's Morgantown is the name, but it's definitely it's a like small a city. city for sure. Got it. Yeah, because the Snapped episode made it definitely seem like it was like a small town in yeah, West Virginia. Yeah, it almost seemed like it was a suburb, but trying to give you as an image of like where totally. this is going down, it is a yeah. small, it was a city in West Virginia. Yeah, almost. and I mean, it's a town in the sense that there aren't huge skyscrapers everywhere, but yeah. the vast majority of it, you know, it's a huge kind of area of land, if you will. Just to give you guys sort of a start on who we need to focus on for this case, is there, it's three main girls. Yeah, we want to make sure that this is clear because yeah. even as we were researching this, um, you know, I had some trouble like, OK, wait, who is who? What's happening here? So we want to like lay out exactly who everyone is. Exactly. So it's three teenage girls. They're all best friends. Sheila, Rachel and Skylar. Skylar is, of course, the victim that we're going to be talking about. So we're going to just refer to them as Sheila and Rachel on the side. But know that Skylar is always she's constantly the victim. Um, so Skylar and Sheila actually have been best friends since the age of eight. Right? Yes, exactly. Um, they were very close, and they didn't go to school originally together. In fact, Sheila, yeah. I believe, convinced her parents to move to Morgantown so she could go to University High School yeah. with Skylar. Right, which it's so weird to even hear you say University High School. I know, it's like, I know it's like freaking out, but like... It's funny, yeah. So I think on the Snapped episode, they mentioned about how like one of them moved to Morgantown, and they all kind of, you know, they knew each other yeah. as kids, but then went to high school together, whatever. University High School, I lived literally... Just sort of a an cu- oxy, like a weird. I know name. it is a weird it's like name. Ironic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I lived literally kind of like down the street from University High School. I knew people that worked at University High School. Right. You know, again in that snapped episode, there was like B-roll footage of University High School, and I was like, I was in that high school. Like, what's going on here? Um, but as far as you know, never ran into any of. These as far ladies. as I know, but it's really hard to tell. You know, I always think about this kind of stuff whenever someone, you know, becomes a murderer in a small town or whatever, you're like, did you ever, you know, bump into them at the mall? You know, you never know about that stuff until later. So true. Well, give us a little background on the three girls. Okay, so Sheila Eddy, which by the name, by the way, we are going to, her name is Sheila. It's It looks like Shalia. Shalia, S-H-E-L-I-A. Which constantly confuses me, but it is Sheila. I think it's Sheila. We're going to name, we're going to say Sheila. Sheila Eddy. She was known as the rebel. You know, she was one of those girls that kind of always 
always found herself... A little badass. Yeah, a little badass. That's a good way to put it. She was kind of known as the wildest of the three of them, but she was a good student. Right. Um, She was raised by a single mom who didn't have a lot of resources. Mm -hmm. Um, I think just your typical single family with maybe a lot of issues. She was popular. I mean, we'll get into how they looked, but all three of these girls we're talking about are... Fairly gorgeous girls. Totally. Um, you know. So then Rachel, I'll take, I'll just do all three of Please. them while we're here. Yeah. Rachel, she was the, I think she's like red, we have a picture. Rachel she, Shof. She's, yeah, she's she, a redhead. Yeah, redhead. Um, she came from a more affluent area of, of Morgantown known as Cheat Lake. Now, this is sort of, there's a big lake just on the outside of Morgantown. Whenever you drive there from where I lived at the time, you had to drive over the huge bridge that went right by it. And as is the case with most, you know, rural lakes, there's a big development all all around the lake, both people that live there year round and, um, you know, uh, tourists and vacationers. Um, So she lived there year round. So, you know, that is definitely known as like where like the doctors and all the lawyers and those types. Very affluent area. Absolutely. Um, But she had gone to Catholic school. And um, a friend of all three of these col- uh, three girls told Oxygen on the episode of Snap that, quote, she took religion very seriously. Yes. So just to give you a little flavor, you know, a little peppermint schnapps as we head she into... She was definitely a religious... Right. ...oriented person. Which will Rachel come into Shofless. play a little bit later on in this episode. Um, and then lastly, of course, Skylar, who was the victim, was always in honor classes. She was a straight-A student. She yep. was known to be quiet and studious. Um, her father actually appeared on the episode of Snap um and said that he, quote he uh that she quote always had her nose in a book so giving her a little bit of I information I think she wanted to be a lawyer she was Oh really? really yeah. that's what the dad said on that on snap episode it just seemed like she Yeah she I mean, her, she had her shit together. She totally did. You know? Unlike it sounds like some of these other people. So, um, those are just some ideas about, or some background about the three girls that we're going to talk about throughout this episode. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the girls. It's important to know that all three girls were fairly inseparable. Yeah. As young teenage girls, I think tend to be in high school. Yeah. Um, actually, Fantasia Liller, who was friends with Rachel Schoff at the time, told Oxygen, "Quote: In between classes, they met at a certain place. They always sat at the same table. So, mm-hmm. give you an idea of how click. clicky they yeah. are, like, and how." close that group is which by the way is i think really adds to the idea that they're just regular teenage girls totally there's I nothing mean, like out of the ordinary <laughs> right. there's no like odd behavior they weren't loners right. they were all three smart pretty popular girls everyone seemed to kind of you know gravitate towards them yeah uh you know and they actually lived during the social media era so we can see yeah. how popular they really were that's a good point um there's a lot of pictures of these girls on the internet i mean we found a ton we ha- we're looking at one yeah. of the main ones like right in front of us to kind of remind us of an idea of how close they really were and how pretty they really were and you can find this image on oxygen.com by the way we have this stuff up on the website if you want to go get a visual as we talk about this absolutely but all just cute fun girls yeah so let's just i mean what else is there to say about them i think you know as we get to know who they were and as we hear about what exactly happened with the crime it just reminds me of like a 90s rom-com or like you know scream i always think about scream when i think about this because they were in high school and like people were getting murdered and and they're really young like i mean you're just like you're thinking about boys and or we'll get into maybe girls. Yeah, or maybe um, something else. I was definitely thinking about both. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's important to just paint the picture of, like, I know, yeah. teaser. Fun, fun facts about Darren. Um, I think it's important to really paint that picture of them as just, like, three mm-hmm. normal high school girls trying to get by. One of whom is very religious. One of whom Completely is, unassuming. And one is a little bit wild. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's how it happens. All right. Well, let's get into the actual crime. Yeah, this so, is, like, the crazy stuff. So go ahead and take this first part here as we get into okay. what happened. Okay. So... Uh, Sheila, Eddie, and Rachel Shove had sort of gotten closer uh, as their as of the three girls, their friendship grew. But I think Rachel and Sheila definitely got to be a lot closer, sort of ousting Skylar out. There were a lot of things that she started. They didn't really like Skylar at the end. They kind of hung out by themselves, so they were kind of pushing her out. So. One, here's the actual crime. Sheila, Eddie, and Rachel Schof had picked up Skylar um, a little bit after midnight on July 6th, 2012, to go smoke weed, which apparently they did often. They would find a certain place, 
They'd take the car a certain place, they'd smoke weed. Sheila and Rachel had armed themselves with kitchen knives, a shovel, and cleaning supplies. So they had planned this murder. I was going to say, murder. this is a premeditated murder. Now, they had talked, if you want to watch the, the Oxygen Snapped episode, you know, it was very clear that they had planned to do this. Yes. Um, and were basically... This you wasn't know, an accident. No, exactly. And, you know, it wasn't that long ago. 2012 was only a couple years ago. Do you happen to remember, like, my favorite thing to do whenever I'm... It's like, where was where I? Where was I when this was going down? So, of course, you know, I look at my phone. Yeah. Because the best way for me to remember is to either look at my social media... Oh, that's a good point. ...or look at my phone because I can see what pictures I was taking at that time. So I go back, and I'm looking, July 6, 2012, yeah. and I was just at a friend's house. Nothing interesting, but I was only an hour away. That's where... Isn't that that's weird to think really about? really weird. I worked same job I have now. Yeah, you were still and like, you were It here. was 4th of July, yeah. probably, right? So I was, Yeah, around that time. Yeah. So I was oh, probably that's true. with friends. Vacationing. Yeah, know? that's like, what I was I doing. Was in, I was vacationing, I'm but sure. It's just weird because you can see like the timestamp on the photos and I was like, wow. While I was this horrific crime was happening, yeah, like and what everyone like, else was doing. It's weird to think yeah. about that like time stops with a murder, but like the whole world exactly. keeps... Like even right now, like something's happening in this world that we don't know about yet. Yeah. And like, we're just here recording this yeah, podcast. exactly. Little um, old us. So they pick up, so basically they pick up Skylar out of her apartment complex. Um, you know, we find out later sort of that she had climbed out of her, her bedroom window, went into the car with Sheila and Rachel. Yeah. They drove to a remote area in Pennsylvania because, again, they were smoking weed and this was their this was their spot, you know, 40 minutes away from their hometown, nothing out of the ordinary. This was totally normal. They were in Pennsylvania, I think that's in what In Pennsylvania, they, they had crossed the border, but this was their normal, you know, weed station. No. Nothing would have tipped Skylar off that, like, hey, where the fuck are we going? Exactly, because you know? it's important to note, you know, having lived there, not to keep bringing that up, but, you know, Morgantown is literally right on the border of northern West Virginia into Pennsylvania. So, right. you know, it, it might sound like, oh, they crossed, you know, state lines. It's like rural. It's, it's like you wouldn't even know, probably. You wouldn't even think that you were in another state because a part of that sort of northern or rather that southern part of Pennsylvania, that border area, is kind of like the extended part of Morgantown. Yeah. You go up, uh, I think it's I-79 up uh, to get to, like, Pittsburgh from Morgantown. So, like, I had driven up through there a million times. And it's so, so, so rural. I mean, fields, mountains. Right. Look, if you're going to smoke weed somewhere and don't want people to catch you, that's, that's the place probably, to go. Yes. Yeah. So all of you weed smokers out yeah. there, you can gather in this ne- one place. There's a tip for you. Yeah. Um, okay. So like we said, this was a premeditated murder. There, nothing seemed out of the ordinary for Skylar at all. Yeah. And Sheila and Rachel, I guess, had a pledge. And this is how oh, it was going to go creepy. down. This is so chilling. They had a pledge that they were going to begin stabbing Skylar because, again, they had all the supplies in the car after they counted to three. So essentially just, and listen, in three seconds, if you're, if you're thinking about it, one, two, three, if your friends are sitting there as I'm trying to picture myself as Skylar now, like there's not even time to begin to question what's going down. It's not like they're chanting weird things. They're like counting to three, Yeah, you know, like there's nothing, you know what I, like she didn't even know what was going to happen. She didn't know what was going on. There was completely unassuming, completely unassuming. This is totally normal. Yeah. Uh, and that's what they did. They counted to three and they, they stabbed her. Now, I think this is an important thing to mention, which I had actually sent to you today. Shockingly. Yeah, you did your own little research in the yeah, background well, here. You know, taking this podcast very seriously. Shockingly, in April 2013, so this is. You almost know, a year, not quite a year. This is almost a year because this happened in July. Yeah. Sheila actually tweeted. Quote, we really did go on three. Now, this is live on Twitter. You yes, can go to you her can account. See it right now. We will link out to it on social media or something, maybe. Yes, I believe. Um, I actually believe it happened. If I looked at the timestamp today, I think it was March 31st of 2013. Mm. So if you're going through her timeline okay. and you don't see it April 1, I believe it might have been March 31st. But okay. because it happened so late, it was like April 2013. Oh, gotcha. The weird thing about this post, and I looked at it today, which is just so fucking chilling to see. Like yeah. when I was looking at that, I was like, oh my God, she's tweeting about doing this. Yeah. Um, it has 939 <laughs> likes. Yeah. Can we talk about that? Yeah, let's talk about that. How I was, do you like something like that? I was just going to say, we'll po- we'll share it on our Twitter account, but we won't be liking it but from the Oxygen account. But isn't that fucking sick? I mean, there's... Well, there's, I, I don't... I, it depends. I mean, look, when social media, are you... Whenever you click like, or now right, I think no it's dis- favorite. There's no, like, dislike. Right. So I don't know if it's like you're liking it to draw attention to it. Or to maybe, like, you know, kind of bookmark that, because then you can go exactly. back to your likes and see what That's you like. That's what I'm thinking, but... 
to yeah. see something like that. Like no, we really I agree. did go on three and then to see 939 likes, you're like, yeah. I don't know how to emotionally take that Handle in that. even years later, not knowing who that person is. It's like, it's just very fucking eerie. No, I agree. And on top of that, you know, there are a lot of comments people, you know, even back around that time, because you can see all the sort of at replies mm-hmm. on Twitter. You know, people were like, wait, oh, my God, are you serious? Ew, this yeah. is crazy. Like, people, like, really responding to, like, why would you ever tweet something like oh, that? Oh, I mean, all the com- – I mean, there were even more comments to be yeah. said. And, and I was looking through some of them, and a lot – you know, a lot of them were like – I know. Sick fuck, like, rotten jail. It, it just – like, and the fact that this girl is 16 years old, like, this is – I, I was like breathless at work, yeah, like yeah. looking at this stuff. But it is there; it is live. You can yeah. definitely see it. It is not deleted. Yeah. So when, when the actual crime went down, you know, they began stabbing St- Skylar in the back. She really fought for her life, according yeah. to um, I think it was either Sheila or Rachel. Because she, Sheila had her hand cut. Right. right? So she got, she was stabbed over fifty times. Um, at one t- at one point, Rachel was cut in the leg. Yeah. Um, but again, Skylar was stabbed approximately fifty times. I mean, I it's read, just a horrific thing. I read somewhere. I mean, first off, like fifty times. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't even know what that number. No. I just like the the visual image of it. It's like, what does that body look like? What did they? But I actually the read. Sound. I actually read somewhere as I was just reading multiple accounts of this murder, and there's mm-hmm. a whole website dedicated to this because it's right. just so it's fucking covered gruesome. A lot, yeah. And I and I almost hate to say it to you because it's so chilling, but just mm. to get an idea, I read somewhere that they stabbed her until her neck stopped gurgling with Ugh, blood. Oh my god! Which, like, if you again, six. That's what I'm saying. The, and the, sixteen. The sound of that is like oh. haunting. You know, like that's one of those. I, you mentioned this in our sort of pre-production meeting. Yeah. And it like really stuck with me the rest of the night. I was like, oh, I need to like take a nap and get my mind. Like off it's of beyond this. brutal. I don't. Yeah. I don't. No, that's like, definitely. There's brutal. no other way to. You know, and that's interesting that you say that. I it's, think I said brew fucking tality to you, you yesterday, did, and yeah. I was like, that's <laughs> the way it is because it's like it's. Brutal. Look, we come up with our own words here on Martinis. We and do. Murder. I we're, insert we're, curse we're, words wherever possible. We're one of the pioneer podcasts that makes Blame up the our martinis. own words. Yeah. No, it's definitely horrible. Um, Rachel went on to say that they couldn't bury her body because the area was covered with too much rock. Yeah. Which I don't know. That I mean, sounds a little like weird, weak, though, because if you're thinking about like 16 year old girls, like them That's being true. able to build a whole grave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that takes work. No, totally. You're you know? right. That's so a good I. Point. Uh, there was too much rock. The dirt was too hard, I guess, for them to sort yeah. of bury the complete body. Right? And she says that they basically left the body where it was and just covered it with branches and leaves, which is interesting to me. You know, I, we've obviously talked a lot about true crime, and you know, right. I'm particularly interested in the Adnan Syed situation, that totally. whole stuff from Serial. And you know, the there was branches and leaves involved with that murder as well. And you know, to cover a body with branches and leaves really kind of makes you look if they if, should they ever find out that it I was mean, you it's pretty amateur first yeah of that's all. what i'm saying right. like they 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 will know that you these random pile of branches and leaves weren't just miraculously falling on the body like that was a you know in terms of their premeditated yeah. knowing to get shovels and stuff they didn't kind of think that part through which no, i totally. thought was another reflection of how immature and young they are and i've thought about it a lot of times just picturing like these three again pretty young girls yeah. doing this yeah when you stab someone once let alone 50 times like what are your clo- like what do you look like <laughs> right. you know what i mean like you like must have clothes. looked like yeah, yeah just everything but like blood spatter and it must have been just they must have been covered i don't try to think i'm such a like queasy like i get so grossed out by gore even though i love true crime i I find the gory part of it really hard to deal with yeah i can't even imagine what that would be like i mean are they like so they went to change their clothes after obviously because they came back like everything was normal yeah and and apparently they burned their clothes or something i think they burned their clothes yeah, yeah because i mean I don't think t- I don't think any amount of tide was going to get that <laughs> no, shit out. You know, no, what a I mean? tide to go stick was not going to help yeah. them with this particular situation. Hey guys, I brought a tide to go stick. <laughs> um, here's the weird thing. I know though. this really freaks me this out. This is like and maybe it's just because I don't identify with a lot of religion. Also, yeah, that it's like all yeah. personally that it's like oh my god. <laughs> so Rachel, obviously of Rachel and uh, Rachel and Sheila, Rachel who was the religious one. Yeah. Uh, went to church camp the next morning. The next morning. As and if like, there's nothing, like... 
how do you kill someone and then go to church camp? And I saw <laughs> pictures on Dr. Phil, because Dr. Phil covered this murder too. Oh, right. I saw pictures of her literally the next morning. They showed a picture with, with Rachel no. and her mother, happy, smiling with her mother, <gasps> arms around each other as if nothing had happened. And Dr. Phil t- asked her mother, they were like, so you were with Rachel the day after the murder? And she's like... Yes, but I didn't know that. You know, she was trying to clarify. She yeah. said, I didn't know well, that's that what, my daughter had just fucking killed that's a goes, 16-year-old girl. Yeah, that goes back to what I was just saying. Like, where right. were you in that moment? Just like, oh, going to church camp. Oh, my God. It's crazy. Church camp. Camp, yeah. I mean... Not church. How, and it makes me wonder, one of the first things I thought of whenever I read this fact was, wh- how, what mentality, like, what is in your brain you that, know, you, click that, that you can do that especially at that age yeah exactly like maybe when you're older this is just hypothetical from my own personal opinion maybe when you're older it'll eat away at you in a different way who knows exactly the mind of a murderer but to be like in high school and murder someone and then just just go off to church camp the next day what is your outlook on life like how do you kind of yeah like look the at development that? process of a teenage girl I mean it, you're not even fully formed I mean I'm yeah. 28 years old and I and there's not... no way I could I could have done first off I wouldn't be going to church camp but even if <laughs> I did there's no way I would have been able to like brutally fucking murder someone yeah. and then pretend like everything's normal let alone someone who can barely understand their own emotions. Like, there's something amiss here. Yeah. She must have felt, in my opinion, it feels like she must have felt either justified or not understood what killing someone meant. And the, Yeah, no, that's a good point. And I think maybe most murderers don't have a respect for life that they don't understand. Right. But to be in high school, I'm like... One way or the other, how are you landing on a... Yeah, like, how are you landing on a thought process where that makes any sense in your brain? I I, I, I don't even know what to say to it, you know And it makes you think, like, you know, here are these three run-of-the-mill white girls from West Virginia. Right. And... Who ended up murdering someone? It makes you think, like, could anybody then be a murderer? Like, well, the, it's funny because even on Doctor Phil and I watched the Anderson Cooper piece, and a lot of the friends that had been friends with Sheila, and we'll sort of get to the aftermath of yeah. all of this. And so this is years later. Yeah. They were like, "I've been best friends with this girl since yeah. we were a kid," and it's weird to think about me just be even after yeah. the murder, like being best friends with a murderer. I mean, and it goes into, like, the Twitter account, too. Like, oh, there's just someone's regular Twitter account mentioned, who's also, by the way, a murderer. Yeah, we really did go on three. It's like... Ugh, it's so weird. Like, all the normal stuff that the typical things, the typical details freak me out. Right. Because you want to find signs of why someone would do something like this. You want to be like, oh, there's that. I could have prevented this. Exactly. And every sign is just like a completely normal person with no no quote unquote mental issues, I guess. Yeah. So that's that's the crime. That's what we're talking about today. That's what happened. That's how it all Um, went down. Yeah. This is obviously not a cold case. We know who did this. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, so talk to me a little bit about the after- aftermath, John, because yes. we know a lot about this Yeah, now. so police, whenever, you know, I guess Skylar first went missing, police first believed that Skylar was a runaway. Her because, parents went up to her bedroom, right? Yeah, and like, like I think couldn't find her, or maybe the window was open, something along yes. those lines. Um, because they have footage of her running out of her house and getting into a car. The footage was too grainy, however, to see the make of the car or to who was driving. Um, and I think it's important to mention that that yeah. footage, because Skylar That's lived true, in an yeah. apartment complex, right. because we both watched it, yeah. um, <laughs> that she wasn't being dragged or kidnapped. She no. was volunteering and going in this car. Right. Like, By the way, other side note, personal note, I lived down the street from that complex. From that apartment complex? So, that yeah. So if she in? was living there in Morgantown, which I think she was, at the same time I was, we were in some ways kind of sort of neighbors. When did you leave Morgantown? I was there from 05 to 2010. Okay. So I had mean, she been theory, there a few years earlier? Been there. Yeah. Anyway, I'm very familiar with it oh at least. God, it's so, fucking so weird. Freaky. Okay. Keep going. Yes. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. So, um, you know, one of the more chilling things about this whole scenario, whenever they weren't sure like who did it, was yeah. that Sheila helped distribute the missing persons flyers with Skylar's mother and went on search parties in the woods. I mean, from what I gather, I feel like the parents were like comforting Sheila. Yeah, of course. I mean, they're best friends. Remember? Like she's a family. It's like another daughter to her. Absolutely. I mean, that's one of the sickest. That's so fucking sick. I know. (laughs) I'm sorry. She's very disturbed folks. She's giving me that face. It's so sick. It's sick. But you know what else? 
in the true crime world that I follow and that you follow, how many times have we heard about the killer passing out the flyers and like well, pretending always, to care? It's always like the yeah. last person who saw exactly. them or the person. I don't know. That's why like parents are always the first person police yeah. question. The boyfriend. The boyfriend. The, you know, yeah, like totally. But the parents knowing that after the fact. I know. I know. Oh my god. And actually, David Neese uh, talked on the episode. Skyler's dad. Skylar's dad um, spoke on the episode of Snapped and said, "Quote: Sheila would call me every single day and would ask questions like, what do the cops know? Do they know something? You know.' So I always, I, you know, this is just me. I'm like, is she? I'm curious. I'm coming up with my own opinion here. Right. Is she calling and being like, oh, no, you know, what do the cops know? Is everything OK? But secretly, obviously, trying to make sure she her ass is covered. Exactly. You know what or I mean? is she being like, well, what do the cops know? Like, what, yeah. what, what did they say anything like it's and as a parent, yeah. like you're not assuming that your daughter was murdered by her best friend. You would think also, hypothetically. I mean, if I was a parent yeah. and I had a murdered kid. Yeah. Another sixteen-year-old girl murdering my daughter. Like who? That doesn't happen. One that's, of whom that, was just at church camp. Like, like obviously, that's, like, that's, that's like not a gonna... psychopath. Like that just yeah. doesn't happen. No, and I, I can only imagine the aftermath now. Yeah. Yes. So when school started back up, because um, again, this was in the summer. Right. This was over the summer. Rumors began to circulate that Sheila and Rachel knew something. One rumor was that uh, Skylar had overdosed on a drug, and Sheila and Rachel had hid the body. Again, this was mentioned on that episode of Snapped, I believe, as but well. But I think Skylar's really good friend, who was a boy, I can't remember his name right now, said that he never really saw Skylar do anything more oh, than read. Oh, from the Snapped episode. From the Snapped episode. So the snapped episode like, yeah. He never really. Saw, it wasn't like yeah. they were popping pills. Like something you could <laughs> going really crazy. Dion, yeah, yeah. He's like, I never saw Skylar do anything more than weed. So right. he, automatically for him, he was like, shake it up, Matt. I know. We need a refill. I'm already finished my drink. I know. It was so Keep delicious. Going. Um, <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. Uh, I'm feeling the effects. Yeah. Uh, I'm getting kind of So warm. I think for him, he automatically tossed that right. out of his mind as like, mm, yeah. I don't think she would have OD'd. Like this was right. a really smart capable honor student girl like yeah. why would she have od again we just go back to that profile you know these are not the type of people that would commit a murder or be murdered or exactly. be a part of any of this situation exactly um so six months after the murder rachel had a nervous breakdown and was suicidal rachel's the religious one remember right and um after spending some time in a mental health facility she had confessed to police so there we go we know she was she had confessed she said she did it it took a long time for her to say that she and Sheila had stabbed Skylar to death because she was so overcome with emotion. Um, if you watch that episode of Snap, they give a really good, like, detailed yeah. description. You get to see a recreation of the situation. I think she even asked for a trash bucket before she even started to confess anything to police. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, Matt. Here comes Be round two. Round I don't two. know if I should have another Speaking one. Speaking of trash buckets. Yeah. I'm let's get throw trash. up from this. Another, here we go. Another clink here. Yeah, so Come she was on, round two, speaking of throwing go. up. Here you go, um, so Thank you. right before she even confessed anything to police, yeah. she had asked for a trash bucket because she thought she was going to get sick. And what does that say to you that she was guilty? So, Sorry, no, totally. That's but, what that says. But doesn't? But do you think it's uh, her sickness or her overwhelming feeling was that she was guilty, and or was it that she was like? guilt felt felt guilt for murdering you know what i mean like do you I think mean, she was in trouble and that's why she realized she was getting caught yes and yeah. i think that guilt is one of the most interesting human emotions yeah. because i think outside of like sadness or depression yeah. i think guilt really can eat away at a person right. on like and it's like and it's, it's it's like an independent killer in your own mind because guilt is only felt individually. Like it's hard to feel guilty about for anybody else. Like it's something you really take on as an individual. And I can only yeah. imagine, first off, this girl is religious. Like she knows the difference between right and wrong. This isn't a four year old. Right. Like she's, she's smart. She's capable. Yeah. And I think knowing maybe you don't know the consequence of like, okay, I'm going to get, yeah, I'm yeah, going to yeah. be in prison for the rest of my life. My life. <laughs> but knowing that you took a life. Yeah. I think, I mean, it's got to be enough to eat at you, enough to make you certainly throw up before yeah. you're about to admit it to everyone, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh, this was also the moment where Rachel um, talked about the motive, and she said it was simply that they didn't want to be friends with Skylar anymore. We had mentioned that at the top of the show. But like, what? But like, <laughs> no. But like, let's pause on that for yeah. a second because we mentioned that at the top of the show. Where, yeah, they didn't really like her, and they wanted to stop being friends, so they murdered her and stabbed her. 
50 times. Yeah. How is that an option, exactly? It's not like embarrassing her or cutting yeah. her off or not responding to her tweets. You brutally murdered yeah. someone. You took a fucking human life. Yeah. And that... You're fired up today. Well, you know how I feel about, like, innocent people. You yes. know how I feel about capital punishment and no, murder. Yeah. And, like, just we'll as get friends. Yeah, we'll that. get to like, that. You can tell the listeners how you feel We're as very well. close to it. And it's just like... Yeah. That is also such a 16-year-old justification for taking a life. No, You know I what agree. I mean? Like, ugh. You know, like, I just don't want to be friends she, with her anymore. We're not friends anymore. She tweeted something at right. me. Like, and then <laughs> and they killed her. Yeah. Like, it's so horrible to say. So, that's That's got to be angering yeah, no, to the parents. I completely agree. So afterwards, you know, the police were like, Rachel, take us to the body. You know, I have a problem with this. You know, in our pre-production meeting, it wasn't as much of a problem for others. But she took them. She took them to try to find the body, but couldn't find it because there was so much snow on the ground. And I'm like, okay, I get it. There's snow on the ground. It's six months later. It's January. Yeah, it's snowy. But like, but like, how do you just like give up and not look for like? How do you uh, bring something? If you know that there's snow on the ground, like you should know it's not going to be like above the snow. Like how do you just give up because there's snow on the ground? And it's also like six months later. Like yeah. what do you like something what do you has happened? Yeah, exactly. You know, like shit has come down. Right. The body has decomposed to some to some level to some yeah. degree. Like yeah, there's a lot of. There's a lot of weird things. Yeah, going a lot on of weird there. things going on here. And then, um, you know, afterwards, the police had Rachel wear a wire to go in to talk to Sheila to, to try implement to, sh- to yeah. implement Sheila. Yeah, 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 to get Sheila to talk or to say that some say something incriminating. Um, police believe that Sheila knew that she that she was wearing the wire. Oh, social media. She wasn't able to. Um, you know, she didn't reveal anything. She, nothing. You know, there was no sort of confession that they could catch. But afterwards, if you want to take this, yeah. One, well, the police believe that yeah. that Sheila knew that Rachel was wearing a wire, right? Because again, didn't admit anything, like John said. Mm-hmm. But right after Rachel left their rendezvous together, tweeted these three things in succession, which I think are still you can still see. Yeah. LOL. Surprise, surprise. This is my in own intonation caps. here. Yes. Uh, seriously. And then the third one is so disappointed. This was right after Rachel left. So in some, and you know, listen, this girl isn't an, this girl isn't an FBI agent. She isn't an <laughs> undercover cop. She's a 16 right. year old girl wearing a wire to incriminate her supposedly best friend in a right. murder. Like yeah. who knows how well this whole thing was done or if Rachel had intimated, like we don't know. Yeah. The only thing that the police can suspect is from these three tweets, which again, social media, it's like, it's, well, just, it's just amazing to me. And that you always hear about people on social media. Like I've read a lot about how like people on Periscope, yeah. like Periscoping their drug deals and then they get busted. I'm like, how stupid do you have to be? Like, why are you posting this? If you're the killer, stop being on social media. I mean, there's a lot of things to be said for that. No, I know. But people aren't the smartest, especially when it no. comes to social media. Good point. Uh, word to the wise out there. If you're questioning it, <laughs> don't do it. That's <laughs> my rule go. of thumb. But Rachel had sort of always said, and I, we don't know if this was just to get herself off maybe for mm-hmm. less time but she but Rachel had always said that it was Sheila's you Idea. know she was the main motivator again she was the bad girl she was the one who was always testing limits and like kind of was the leader of the group yeah. uh, that it was always Sheila's idea to kill Skylar um, and apparently according to diaries according to friends at school Sheila had been researching many different ways of disposing a body. Again, which, this is on the episode of Snapped, if you yes. want to go back and listen to some of the ways that they, they looked into it, which were really disturbing she as asked well. in her biology class like the best way to dispose of a body and, you know, no one really signaled <laughs> this. Insane. No one, this was just this was just sort of talked about. Because they're kids, of course. Like, no one's, like, ever going to suspect that these two kids are going to be actually disposing I mean, a body. kids ask, like, you know, kids say the darndest things, you know what I mean? Like, and, <laughs> yeah. and if their mind wanders to something, it doesn't it's just, it could be a place of just like natural curiosity right. as opposed to like, wait, you're going to dispose of a body? Yeah. Like the thought, especially like as a female, like who yeah. is this girl killing? Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> like she's what, 90 pounds maybe? <laughs> um, even oh, I think chilling. even on the Snapped episode, it said that some of her, that they even, that Sheila had asked Skylar, like, if you were going to die, That's right. how, how would you, you want to do die? It? Yeah. And like, 
How do you answer a question like that? Um, in this, in my sleep, when I'm 99 years old, <laughs> maybe 100. That's right, how right. I would answer that fucking question. Oh my god! Not stab 50 times in the back. In the back in a field. I guarantee right. you, Skylar didn't answer it that no, way. No, I'm I sure can, she I'll put didn't. money on it right yeah, now. Yeah, let's put that out there. Yes. So eventually, cadaver dogs found Skylar's remains, and again, going back to social media, Sheila yeah. t- made another tweet. She tweeted, um, rest easy, Skylar. You'll always be my best friend. I miss you more than you could ever know. What? I mean, she's clearly, I mean, knowing that we know that she did it now, like yeah. that's clearly like I'm sure. covering up my tracks. Sure. But to be fair, not knowing that she would did it just as like, if you're a friend or whatever and you yeah. don't believe it. I mean, that's a perfectly normal, that's true. Quote unquote, normal thing to say. I think it had a picture with it. It definitely did. Yeah. Of, of the two girls, like, like being like, like, yeah, like their tongues out and like having fun. Again, there's tons of pictures of them on social media. Yeah. You can go to this account right now and it's a perfectly like and favor it. reasonable thing to say about your really good friend. Yeah. Is missing or murdered. So let's get into the motive a little bit more because it turns out that there was a little more to the picture here than was sort of, than meets the eye. Exactly. Um, I don't know if you want to take this. I know you had particular <laughs> particular thoughts. Oh, really, John? I like that he calls me <laughs> no. out. No. We're bearing the lead. No, no, um, no, no, no. Take it. Take so it away. as I sort of had mentioned, um, well, we had sort of said that, you know, they didn't want to be friends with her anymore. So Skylar had been feeling a little bit left out in yeah. some sort of way. I mean, Rachel and Sheila had definitely had a close bond, mm-hmm. uh, needless mm-hmm. to say. I see that little tone that you're hitting me with. Yeah. Um, so Skylar had sort of had this feeling of being left out of this threesome. Uh, choice words there. Yeah. And uh, she was tweeting, quote, sick of being at fucking home. Thanks, friends. Loving ha- love hanging out with all of you, too. Like, you know, Rachel and and uh, Sheila had gone away together. They had hung out. And definitely Skylar was feeling left out. And police were interested, actually, in a tweet that Skylar had posted about nine months before her murder, saying, quote, I tell the whole school all the shit I have on everyone, which is a lot. With like five T's. Yeah. Hashtag if I could get away with it. So then you have to wonder, what was that shit that she had on everyone? Right. Who and is everyone? Who is everyone? Obviously, like, she's hanging out with these two girls on an awful lot. And, and, and what it seems to be just socially is like she's pretty much exclusively like hang. If she knows something, yeah. it's about these two girls. Um, so, yeah, what was that shit? So according to Skylar's diary, you know, thank I mean, kind of thank God that every like little girl keeps a diary. It's pretty <laughs> yeah. bad. Um, Sheila and Rachel had become involved sexually. Uh, an, investi- an investigator actually claimed that the diary diary said that Sheila and Rachel had done quote everything that two girls could do together and as a lesbian I can say we can do a lot so <laughs> I can just imagine all right what was that's going good to down. know I'm just trying to say no I love it because Thank you, you might not know I have no idea and Matt has no idea uh, Matt certainly doesn't I have no uh, uh, so expertise just, you have no ex- both of you guys have nothing this is why we are on the show we need you on the show you to made tell me take us. this point for a reason I absolutely did I set you up on that one <laughs> and, and, you know you looked at me like oh, you, you might want to take thing. this one The diary confirms it that there was some sexual lesbian relationship going on between Sheila and Rachel. So, yeah. So it kind of puts it in a different perspective. You know, we kind of wanted to wait to the end to mention this so that you guys kind of listening kind of kind of put the puzzle together in a way because right, it kind of about the description yeah I was going to say the tone of the scenario kind of rang a little bit into this world but until I had heard that on the episode of snapped I was like oh yeah that makes total sense right. and, and I you're totally experimenting get it. and like sure and I will say and like this isn't justification but when you're okay small town Morgantown I don't know how it is but again Rachel West Virginia let's West just put Virginia, it that way yeah Rachel's very much so. See, I think about it less than Sheila because Sheila was sort of a bad girl and would talk about being a bad girl a lot. So I find her probably less, not embarrassed about it, but certainly less wanting to hide it. But maybe. Right, she's not going to church camp. Exactly. She's not going to church camp. So Rachel being entrenched in this religious life in West Virginia, as you said, and even for me, someone who was has always been accepting of gay people, has always, like, questioned her sexuality, you know, when I was younger. Uh Uh-huh. It's like a hard thing to come to terms with oh, it totally. anyway. And like, especially when you're first kind of coming out or you're first experimenting, let alone at 16. Mm-hmm. And even if you're straight at 16, you really care about what other people think. Oh right? my God, like 100%. That's the mentality here. And and you don't really want anyone to know before you know. Of course not. I you mean, know? I remember being 16 years old. You know, I'm a gay man as well. And, and you were a gay man in West Virginia, so you could Well, I was in Maryland. Oh yeah, you mean well, when I was there in yeah. college. No, totally. You know, it... 
I can't I can't sort of emphasize that enough. Being sixteen in a time where no you matter know, your sexuality, no, totally, and you know, I just so sympathize with that. And Me too. the stakes are so high when you're not only sixteen, but obviously influenced by religion and who knows what types of people are around you. You know, it really could come to the point where the only reasonable way for you to live a life is, you know, to kill somebody. I mean, I could totally... Yeah, because you're like so... I don't sympathize with it, but I'm like, my God, of right. course not. You're trapped. Like, what's the one way you can guarantee that a secret's going to be kept silent? Right. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and like, that's not... I'm not trying to sympathize with the murderer Me neither, here. but know that's, you're, you're definitely in a vulnerable position and this to is be amenable p- to any solution that you know will be possible. a guarantee. Right, exactly. So Sheila sort of mentions this, and you're kind of thinking it's a joke. Well, mm-hmm. like, well... Yeah, this does kind of make sense to me. You know, and yeah. it's not a sympathetic thing. I'm just saying we're just trying to, we're both trying to paint a picture paint, of yeah, exactly, like yep. how scared people think like this and how self conscious you can be mm-hmm. in that mentality. As, and as gay people and, and otherwise. Definitely. You know? yeah. Especially as a young person, especially someone who is religious. Totally. Let's get into the sentencing. I'm particularly interested about this with you because as you yeah. mentioned at the top of the show, you're very interested in the Innocence Project yeah. and you know that's something from the one of the first days I met you, we talked about and you really connected with. Um, I'll just go through the sentencing here sure, a because yeah, I kind of have a problem with this as well. Sheila Eddy eventually pleaded guilty to first degree murder and she was sentenced to life in prison with a chance of parole. She'll be eligible for parole in 2028, which really isn't that far away. By the way, she's young, so yeah. think about that. Like At the age of 32. She could have her whole fucking life left. For sure. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. parole, though she's not getting out. I'm just saying right, right. she's eligible. Rachel pleaded guilty to second-degree murder and was sentenced to 30 years. She will be eligible for parole in 2023 at the age of 26. So again, very young. Yeah. You're, you know, I don't know, I don't know personally how many You know, sentencing. Yeah. Um, curious to hear your thoughts in a second as we kind of round this section out. Yeah. Um, but the victim's father, of course, David, who we've talked about, who was on the episode of Snaps, told the court that since the day of his daughter's disappearance, quote, my life and my wife's life have been drastically altered. We're no longer a family. You can look into the eyes of those who were responsible, but you can never know what they heard as they were taking her life. Um, at, yeah, as they were taking her life, which is like so like just my heart sank when I read that because it's disturbing. And he's saying this in front of the two people he knows. Yeah, in the court, yeah. And his gut killed his daughter. Yeah. Like, they weren't there, so it's like... And in the Snap episode, there's footage from the courtroom, and I'm like, of course, I think about this with every murder court case. I'm like, how could you be in the same room with that person and keep your composure? But this is like, you know, I don't know how old he is, but let's just say he's like a 50... He's an adult man. Like, he's 50 or whatever. And these are 16-year-old girls. So, like, even the anger of feeling that way towards a kid, it's such a conflict. Yeah. It's so much easier to be mad in an adult because, like, you know better. Yeah, totally. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, my God... I'm super, I just like I can't even wrap my head around that. Well, here's what really pisses me off is that yeah. Sheila Eddy never addressed the court or apologized for the killing. Skylar's dad said that this was because again quote, it was Rachel who 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 like incriminated her and said she right. was involved. She never came forward. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Skylar's dad said that this was quote unacceptable. I agree. The only time she became emotional was when oh she, she was, was sentenced. sentenced when it was about her. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um. So talk a little bit if you have a quick second. Like, what are your thoughts about the sentencing? Well, I've read a lot about like psycho, like the idea of psycho. Pathy and, yeah. and sociopathy and, and everything like that. And, you know, clearly Sheila had, you know, this is not a normal human response to Just not want to be friends with someone. Mental illness. In I think some anyone, way. if right. you're, I believe that if you're murdering someone, unless it's out of self defense, mm-hmm. you know, certainly if it's by mm-hmm. accident, you know, you run over, whatever. Of course. I'm talking Deliberate about in murder. cold blood yeah. like this, there, the circuits in your brain clearly aren't like a normal, healthy, functioning human right. being. I think that you have to have some sort of um, chemical imbalance in some sort of way. Now, for me, I am also of the firm belief that you are innocent until you are proven guilty. I believe that for any type of case. I, I'm, you know, I give a lot of money to the Innocence Project because I, I, I'm, I'm not a fan of the death penalty. And these girls weren't given the death penalty. So, right. you know, it, it's the Innocence Project doesn't have to come on to say this. But, like, the fact that... Um, you know, and obviously like 
they did it right because even in yeah. even in the oxygen episode they said that they found the bloody they found they found um skylar's blood in yeah. she in the trunk of sheila's car and so she was proven to be guilty and found right. guilty um but the fact that she showed no remorse about it i mean and do you think that the eligibility for parole is justified i don't well listen i mean i think i, I don't kids, i don't though. have an opinion necessarily on like the eligibility of things i think you can be eligible for something and still not get it i mean if you've seen Shawshank sure. redemption i mean red was in prison forever and kept sure. getting denied not to sort of bring it back to this like movie thematic thing but that's a no, pretty that's common a movie point. that people yeah. have seen um i mean this happened when she was 16 yeah, no, that's a you good know, point. And, and I have so to that's, remember and that. That's, that's very, and I'm not, and I, and I'm not saying that once she gets out, she should just be free. I think there's a lot of mental, um, you know, perhaps being instituted to a mental society, something like that, some sort of rehabilitation you have to have. Mm -hmm. But I think, are you a fully formed adult, adult doing it with purpose, knowing exactly what you're doing at 16? Yeah. I don't know. Like, to think about who I was at 16, that was like half my life ago. Yeah. I, I don't know. No, you're right. And That's I think you point. can be... Do I think people can change? Yes. Yes. But do I think that they these girls clearly have some sort of thing to work out? Absolutely. absolutely. Should they be in prison until they're 80? I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, that's kind of what I was going to ask. They absolutely deserve to be in prison. They absolutely deserve to serve this sentence. Yeah. And uh, I know I leave it up to the courts to decide, but she was 16 when it happened. Well, let us, if you guys are listening, if you have, a, have an opinion about that, let us know. Tweet us at Crime Time. You can yeah. hit us up on the Facebook page, Crime Time on Oxygen. Da no doubt she we should just hear be let think. go and like, oh, yeah, she just killed someone. Like, of course. This is a serious fucking crime. Right. She deserves to pay. Right. Uh, but again, being in, being in life without parole, I yeah. don't know if that's the right answer either. That's a good I point. I could see parole being an option. Yeah. And I understand why it's an option. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, let us know what you guys think. We would love to read some of your feedback. Um, the last little part we wanted to mention here on the Which show. Is kind of a really cool thing that you relate to outside of the fact that you Be lived in Morgantown. Totally. So beyond the fact that I lived in Morgantown, I know all these areas. If they, you know, if I right. really researched it, I could, I could tell you even more about the... The Dairy Mart convenience store that was That's at Star City. That's what I really City. wanted to know about. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but the the big thing is that I have a friend, a very close friend of mine, who actually bought the house uh, that Rachel's family owned at that time. In the affluent neighborhood. Yes, in the affluent neighborhood of the Cheat Lake area. Now, obviously, my friend would prefer to keep uh, his or her... Anonymous. A name anonymous. But he, did, he or she did give me some uh, interesting details that I thought would be worth mentioning I on the like show. I have, 50 questions for you. Ooh, so run, I over, love. run over the details for me. Okay, so basically, one of the things he told me was, quote... Uh, when I first moved in, the main door had about three of those screamer locks on the front door, like the ones that they put in nursing homes when people try to escape, which I just thought was a really interesting thing. Like, by the way, I don't know what, you know, was that had they been there since the dawn of time? Who knows when they were installed? But uh, right. interesting note. To, just a good visual. Just a visual. Yeah. Um, he says that he never he or she says that he'd never met. Okay, it's a he. He uh, never actually yeah, met I mean, the, like, the mother or the parents. That's not I tried it down. to. I know. I tried to keep it as anonymous as I could. Sorry. Now he'll need to get gender reassignment <laughs> surgery just to like keep the anonymity. Protect it. Yeah. Yes. Um, he says he never actually met the mother or the parents. He only dealt with the lawyers. Um, his neighbor was actually the woman who ended up going on the Doctor Phil show for whatever. I saw her. Yeah, which you yes, saw. Yes, yes, yes. Um, who I guess was still the neighbor. It's at on that YouTube. Point. If you yeah, want to watch it, out. it, you can. Um, I asked him if people, I, well, you know, you were curious if he uh, knew about whether or not it was that house. Well, um, because like when you get an apartment or you get a house, you know, you real should. estate agents can't tell you if it's a safe neighborhood. Like by law, they're not mm -hmm. allowed to divulge certain things. And so, but again, this was such a big crime, especially for that town. This wasn't in New York City where, to be honest, this happens a lot. Yeah. Like when he's going to look at this house, is the real estate agent like, oh, by the way, by the way, or, something or, crazy. Or do they not even mention it at all? And did he know beforehand? Yeah. Did he know, like, looking at that house, that this was the house of Rachel Schoff? Like, yeah. Well, set here's the what fucking scene. Here's John. what he says. He says, "No, I knew it was her house, but the real estate agent never said anything. When I did the initial walkthrough, it was still completely furnished with family photos and everything." Which. Um, how can you avoid, I don't know, if you know that town, you're going to know that case. How can you avoid being like, right. wait a minute, 
Yeah. This is Rachel Joe. Um, this is an interesting note. Uh, the real estate agent said to not really say anything about the incident inside because the security system was in place and it was pretty intense and we didn't know if uh, someone was recording our voices. Not sure exactly. You know, like, what on earth? Um, he says uh, it was the day before closing that a team actually came and removed all the furniture. Imagine that. Like, this is well, like, the, that the, family's like... house. So I asked him, I was like, what, you know, so what other creepy what things? What that juju in there? That must have been a really nice house. I, no, it definitely, uh, like, that area otherwise... is very nice. He says he only, cre- now this is really crazy. Yeah. The only creepy experience he says that he had was when, quote, we did the final walkthrough that evening, the day before closing. Somebody left a post-it note on the banister outside leaving the house that said, quote, stay calm. What? Or something like that, he said. It was like a what stay calm. What could that calm. even be, though? Um, he said he kind of freaked, it kind of freaked him out, but then his agent snapped it up quickly and crumbled it up to throw it away. Well. Because <laughs> you don't want to be like. As a good real estate uh, agent would, right? <laughs> right. But another really interesting thing that he told me was, because of all of that kind of situation, and once he knew exactly who the these people juju, were, right. he had a psychic come to the house and cleanse the house of all of its negative energy. Um, he says... So what um, did the psychic say? So specifically, there was a lot of negative energy in this house, <laughs> allegedly, from the person that I know. Um, he said specifically, anger, sadness, and frustration were in Rachel's bedroom, oh. and that the psychic p- specifically kind of cleared that out of the bedroom that Rachel was allegedly living in. Uh, you know, like her bedroom at the house. Um, there was a lot of sadness in the parents' bedroom. Well, I mean... Whether that be necessarily about Rachel, who knows exactly. Because, I mean, you do have to think about it, and this sort of comes back to kind of what we were saying. Okay, like, Skylar needs his parents. Like, yes, nothing right. is worse than losing a child. Of course. But having a child who you know murdered someone? Yeah. What's that like? No, I know. What's the name for that? What's totally. the emotion for that? We need I, to get someone in here, like, interview them. That I would don't be know. You know, yeah. like, that has to be its own torture. Yeah, and so I asked him, I was like, are you, were you freaked out by this? Like, like, right. you know, aside from that post-it note, which was kind of crazy, he says that he is not freaked out at all. He redecorated. The house is completely different I think a good now. sage won't fix. Yeah, right? absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So I just thought that was such a crazy coincidence that, you know, we covered this on Oxygen uh, as an episode of Snapped. Obviously a really brutal so case. And then it's so close to home. Um, I thought it was really worth mentioning. But that's the whole... That's the story. That's murder of Skylar Niece. Yeah. Um, you know, again, we'd love to hear your feedback or anything that you guys mm-hmm. think or if you know the family members or anything about it. Obviously, this is such a horrible thing. Yeah. Um, See, any Anything that involves teenagers killing each other, it's uh, just depressing. I mean, just you like know? in cold... It's just like, it's so horrible and it, it really is such a depressing case and... Um, there's nothing really left to say. I, yeah. mean, I think we've covered everything, but it was it's tragic, and that's being yeah, that's being kind. To no, that, you know what totally. I mean. Totally. Um, so let's move on here yeah. from the case. We want to round out this episode. We do want to get to some listener feedback because you guys have been so amazing in responding yes. to the show in the first two episodes. We couldn't be more grateful. One of the things that I mentioned at the top of the show was, do we actually drink? The answer is yes. Trust me. Yes. Steve, Sarah, Johnny, all of you that messaged me and were curious if we're drinking, we are literally. This is my second uh, martini, and it's by the I way, I finished my second martini. I was going to so say. I'm like, I'm a little bit like You're I need to really focus on these words here a little bit because Matt has More got us we have to go back to work lit this. up. I know I mean, it's like the that? end of the day. So um, props to Matt for handing us. I've some never really had to pee so badly. I don't. So, I, I have mean, to like, pee I so, have bad. so badly right now. I know. Now. Let's let's not together. But, yes, but afterwards, we're drinking. <laughs> Trust me, my bladder is signaling yeah. that I'm drinking. We're drinking. Right. Yes. Um, so we have some other uh, ratings and reviews here. If you want to take this one. Yeah, we wanted to show just a few people out. Like we each wanted to give kind of one of you guys a. We wanted a to thank out. you. Yeah. yeah, shout out. So, uh, Portium L38, <laughs> I think that's how I'd pronounce that, gave us five stars on iTunes and says, quote, I never really write reviews, but murders and conspiracy theories have always intrigued me. I know I'm not the only one. I love the chemistry between these two. Can't wait for more. Ooh, thank you thank so you. much for writing that. Um, I've been asking John out on dates for yes. a long time. And I continually tell you, we're both gay. Yeah. Stop asking me but, like, out. that's what we have in common. Yeah, like, you yay. Know I mean? like, yay. It's another thing. But thank you so much. That was really sweet of you. I wanted to shout you out specifically. By the you way, have someone you want to shout 
know now. I do, but I want to mention that the chemistry between us is mainly because of the martinis. You know, we're not really friends outside no. of the show. We can't yeah, stand I mean, each I think other. We both know I hate gay men. Uh, exactly. Definitely. But you, you're just one of those types. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. Another great response. This is from user GGFG101SC. See, which, you got a hard one, which too. Which might be a robot. Who knows? Uh, gave us five <laughs> stars. It might be in my Roomba. Um, gave us five stars and says, quote, just listen to the first episode and can't wait for the second part, which is out now, by the way. Now one of my favorites in my murder collection. Which, by the way, murder collection? I'm like, are you going to be... That, that, that sounds so creepy. But are like, you going to so be on perfect. our show? Are yes. you going to be an episode that we talk about? GGFG 101SC? <laughs> exactly. Thanks, Roomba. Yeah. Uh, but if you guys have a moment, <laughs> please rate and review our show on the yes. iTunes store. This will help us get the word out. We may even read your review right here on the show, as we just did. We greatly cannot stress it enough appreciate it totally and make sure you give us your cases once yes. again if you have a case that you want us to cover a martinis and murder we are t- all ears we would love to do something you guys want us to hear <clears throat> they can be murders cold cases mysteries whatever you want to hear us discuss feel free to tweet us at crime time on twitter or leave a comment on facebook at facebook.com slash crime time on oxygen yes and by the way i'm at carpe darren and i'm jay thrasher yes and be sure to follow us on our crime time blog on yeah. facebook at facebook.com slash Slash crime time oxygen and on Twitter at crime, crime time. time. So coming up on Oxygen this weekend, if you're loving Snapped, all the Snapped mentions, uh, we have a couple of shows. Of course, it takes a it takes a killer. I almost said it takes a skiller. That's not the name of the That's show. That's kind of a good name. It though, takes a for like a skill, like an person. entrepreneur show. Uh, we're oh, patenting it. Patent it. We're mm-hmm. making it happen. Uh, it Takes a Killer returns Friday at 11, 10 Central. Snap returns Sunday at 6, 5 Central with an encore of that same episode airing again at 9, 8 Central. And that's a wrap on episode three, which is about twice as long. So we hope that you guys love all of the murder talk. I highly recommend drinking a candy cane martini Absolutely. you're listening to this podcast. I might want... Can we do another candy-related murder next week? Because I want this one back. I know. God. A special thank you to Matt. At our bartender you know and why producer. It was so good, though? Why? You use regular vodka. That's true. Not vanilla vodka. Smart. Although I do like vanilla vodka. We'll keep him on. We're, we're, gonna we're fight. not going to fire no, him. No, we're going to fight about we're flavored vodka for the rest of our lives because I don't really drink a ton, but I do love a good flavored vodka. Because you're 12. I am There's 12. There's lots of things. That's to a say very good that. point. Yeah, I'm that's, 12. A, that's a whole psychological experience. All right, guys. We'll see you next week for a whole new episode of Martinis and Murder. Thank you for listening. Bye. Bye.